I'm Andrew Fairley, the chairman of Equip Super. I'm also a lawyer at DLA Piper. Uh, there are many superannuation funds today, including Equip Super and Aussie Super and so on, that have already created the opportunity for people who want to manage their own investments, to make stock selections. So there has to be a reason other than having to run your, wanting to run your own portfolio. There has to be a reason for you to want to do it. Uh, certainly the SMSFs are largely being created by rollouts from the big funds, whether they're retail funds or whether they're industry funds. And that's been a, a, an ongoing issue in terms of asset, uh, uh, asset loss. Certainly looking at the statistics from our perspective at Equip Super, there's been a pretty significant decline in rollouts over the last 12 to 18 months. And I think partly that's a product of our education process of saying, look, it actually is an alternative. You don't have to assume that as soon as you get to a particular trigger point that you automatically have to go and roll into an SMSF. And, and let me make one more point. In the big funds, we are prudentially managed quite aggressively by APRA, particularly with these new prudential standards. The regulatory environment for SMSFs is significantly less. It's the ATO that is the regulator and it's, it's got a program whereby there are audits that are undertaken, but, but it's modest. It can't possibly achieve the same level of coverage as APRA does. It, do, it won't surprise me at all if we see a little bit more regulation introduced at various levels and it may well be just in relation to investments, it may well be in relation to issues of gearing and so on. But I think there will be greater regulation, there already has been, I think there's more of that coming. And as each piece of regulation bites into the administration of those funds, so the cost of operation will increase. I think it's an education process. It's really trying to get to the member and the member's advisor to make it absolutely transparent about why it is an advantage for members to do that. Are they wanting to run their own investments proactively? Are they just going to put the money into a term deposit? What is their aspiration and what is their dem demography in terms of when they're going to start drawing down benefits? Because if they stay in a fund, they're going to get the strategic asset allocation, uh, so the investment mix of what they've signed up for. If they roll to their own fund, they have to make the decision about what they're going to do. And I think that's an issue of education and it's an issue of servicing people so that post-retirement they get the same sort of advice and the same sort of understanding that they had before then so that they can make a really informed decision about why they're doing it.